Welcome to the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada's Introduction to Stamp Collecting Series. These videos are designed to introduce you to the various aspects of uh, collecting when you're beginning or uh, to refresh your um, ideas when you're after you've been doing it for a while. And tonight we have the great honor of having Jean Wang to give us an introduction to topical and thematic collecting. Uh, Dr. Jean Wang is a hematologist and leukemia researcher at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto with an interest in medical philately. She is an active thematic collector and exhibitor with a five-frame grand award-winning exhibit that explores the science and societal impact of blood donation and transfusion, and a one-frame exhibit of material from the early Christmas funding appeals of Toronto's Hospital for Sick Children. Jean has given numerous presentations on medical philately and thematic collecting and exhibiting and has written articles for various philatelic journals, including the Canadian Philatelist, Topical Times, and the Philatelic Exhibitor. She recently discussed thematic collecting with Charles Epting and Michael Cortese on an episode of Conversations with Philatelists. Jean is the membership director of the Philatelic Specialist Society of Canada and the editor of the annual PSSC Journal and the North Toronto Stamp Club Newsletter. She is the RPSC Delegate to the Fédération Internationale de Philatelie's Thematic Commission, a member of the Board of Directors of the Vincent Graves Green Philatelic Research Foundation, and since 2018 has been a member of Canada Post Stamp Advisory Committee. On April 18th, uh, Jean was the first Canadian to be appointed to the Board of Trustees of the American Philatelic Research Library. Jean, we're thrilled to have you, and uh, please take it away. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. Um, so today I'm going to give an overview of topical and thematic collecting for beginner collectors, but also for those who already have a topical or thematic collection and may want to expand that collection. There are different ways that people collect stamps as uh, the sort of traditional, and I put that in quotation marks, um, traditional way of collecting uh, more or less focuses on the philatelic aspects of the material that you collect. So on stamp production and usage, on the various rates, uh, routes and markings, uh, etc. And the collections are usually organized according to these philatelic aspects. So they're organized by the country of issue, by the route that the mail took, and so on. And the collection can be very diverse and it can include stamps, postmarks, postal stationery, postal history, and so on. So in contrast, a topical or thematic collection, um, rather than focusing on philatelic aspects, focuses on the images or the subject matter that is depicted on the material that you collect. And instead of organizing according to the philatelic aspects, collections are typically organized according to the topic or theme uh, that is the uh, focus of the collection. But similar to traditional collections, a topical or thematic collection may include stamps, but may include all the other uh, material from other um, branches of philately, including postmarks, postal stationery, postal history, and so on. And really, the scope of a topical or thematic collection is limited only by the collector's imagination. You can make your collection whatever you want, basically. So when you're going to uh, start a collection, you can of course make it as um, broad or as narrow as you like. So you really define the scope of your own collection. So here are some examples. Uh, uh, flowers on stamps is a very popular uh, topic to collect. Um, so people may collect all flowers on stamps or they may focus only on certain types of flowers such as orchids, um, which is another popular topical. Uh, birds is another very uh, popular topic, so people may collect all birds on stamps, or they may focus on loons on stamps, or owls, or falcons, or even specific types of falcons. I have a friend who collects peregrine falcons specifically, or you may want to collect a certain group of birds, such as birds of prey that would include owls and falcons, so really you can define it however you like. And when you are choosing a topic, uh, I find that a lot of people tend to choose a topic that's related to the work that they do, their day job. Uh, so an engineer may choose to collect trains, for example. Uh, you may collect something that's related to one of your other hobbies, like gardening or birding or sailing. 
uh, maybe something related to a place that you've lived or a place that you have visited, or a favorite food or sport that you play, a favorite artist or author, a holiday that you like to celebrate, really anything that tickles your fancy. There's really unlimited uh, topics that, that people can collect. So for myself, um, as Greg mentioned, I'm a, I'm a physician, I'm a hematologist, and I see people who have blood disorders. Uh, so when I decided to start a topical collection, I looked for a topic that was related to the work that I do, uh, because I found that interesting to try and combine aspects of what I do professionally with what I do in my hobby. And so uh, I decided to collect stamps related to blood donation and blood transfusion, because it was a topic that was valid to all countries around the world. So many countries around the world have issued stamps on this particular topic, but it wasn't so broad that, you know, it would be impossible to collect. So I didn't want to collect, for example, Red Cross, which is an enormous topic. Um, but, you know, this is sort of a subset of those Red Cross stamps and it includes stamps that are not necessarily Red Cross as well. So like many people, when they start out with a topical collection, I set out to collect or identify all the stamps that I could find that were related to my topic, to blood donation. So here's the first uh, stamp that was issued on this topic. It was issued by Hungary in 1942 as part of a set of four stamps uh, commemorating the Red Cross. And this was one stamp showing one of the functions of the Red Cross. Uh, and as I looked around, I found many other stamps that uh, had been issued by many countries, as I mentioned. So here's Cyprus, France, uh, Algeria, Belgium, Tunisia, and the list goes on. I think altogether, there have been over, four, uh, over 200 issues on blood donations since this first one in 1942. I just want to mention a few things when you're looking for stamps for a topical collection is that you may find that not all of the stamps in a set may be relevant to your topic. So for example, for blood donation, I found this uh, set of stamps issued by Ethiopia to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Ethiopian Red Cross Society. And as you can see, only the second stamp here, which depicts a patient receiving a transfusion and some blood donation bags, uh, is relevant to my topic and the other three stamps are just, you know, talking about other aspects of the Red Cross. Or for example, this set issued by Great Britain to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the British National Health Service in 1998. The first stamp here is uh, related to blood donation, but the other stamps are related to other aspects uh, and other services that the NHS uh, provides. If you're a bird collector, you may want to collect this set from Jersey that shows wildlife. Uh, in fact, if you're a wildlife collector, this would be a fantastic set because all of the stamps in the set uh, would be relevant to your collection. But if you're a bird collector, only the three of the stamps uh, show birds. If you're an owl collector, you actually get two stamps showing owls. So, you know, you need to kind of decide, are you going to buy the whole set? Mostly mint stamps, when you purchase mint stamps as new issues or even from dealers, you have to buy the whole set. You can't just buy individual stamps. So maybe you buy the whole set and you can trade the other stamps that you don't collect with, with people who have um, complementary topics to what you collect. Here's a set from Jersey that has six different birds in the set. If you're a general bird collector, this is a great set. If you're only collecting peacocks or swans, you know, you would only be interested in one, one stamp in the set. Um, and the other thing to think about is if you're a general bird collector, uh, do you keep this set together or do you split it up and do you keep all your peacock stamps together that come from different sets um, or do you like to keep your sets together so really you can organize it any way that you want but these are some of the things that you might need to think about when you're acquiring stamps for your collection i just wanted to mention also for people who you know have not um done a topical collection when you're when you're searching for your topic online you know on ebay or on Dell camp which is another good online uh, site for buying uh, topical stamps, uh, you'll come across many stamps that have been issued by uh, agencies. So these are the, the common ones are Stamparija. They've changed their name now. They're called Stampera, uh, which is based in Lithuania, and IGPC, which is based in New York. So these are philatelic agencies that have contracts with the postal administrations of different countries. Uh, a lot of them are in Africa or in um, uh, the Caribbean, for example. Um, and they issue stamps that are 
typically sold directly to the new issue market and they're targeting topical collectors. So they will often issue stamps on very popular topics like birds, um, dinosaurs, you know, famous people. And these are topics that they know are very popular. And so they issue stamps with the objective of selling them to these topical collectors. But these stamps generally are not available for sale for postal use in the countries for which they're actually issued. And they often have high face value beyond what is needed for, you know, for postage to mail a letter. And so, um, and also they are, they are considered legal. They are listed in the Scott catalog, for example, but they are considered to be uh, what's called wallpaper by many collectors. So a lot of collectors uh, will not buy these because the topics depicted on the stamps are often not relevant to the issuing country. Um, so, for example, if they're um, issuing stamps on birds, do the birds are the birds actually found in those countries? So, some a lot of collectors will avoid buying these, and and if you avoid buying these, you'll actually save a lot of money. So, just wanted to bring that up to make you aware of that. Uh, so, uh, you know, everyone starts out collecting stamps. After all, the hobby is called stamp collecting. Um, but uh, there's many, many different things, as I mentioned at the beginning, that you can collect. Uh, that you can add to a topical or thematic collection beyond stamps. So for example, for my collection, for, for blood donation and transfusion, as I was looking for stamps to add to my collection, other things were popping up in my searches, and I found them quite interesting, and I started to buy them as well to add them to my collection. So for example, you might find slogans that are part of postmarks or meter marks, and uh, some of them can be quite interesting and relevant to your topic. So this is one from Northern Ireland. Uh, from the Northern Ireland uh, Blood Transfusion Service that says you can't get blood from a stone, neither can we. So they're using humor to try and uh, uh, encourage blood donors. Um, you can find different uh, kinds of postal stationery. This is an example from Romania. It's a postal stationery envelope with a printed indicium on it. And the cache shows a blood donor receiving a certificate after giving a, a blood donation. And there's lots of different advertising cards and covers where often the advertising will subsidize the face value of the uh, of the item. So this is a, an echo card from Japan that has an ad showing a patient uh, hooked up to a plasmapheresis machine. And these ads uh, subsidize the face value by five yen. So these cards were sold for five yen less than the face value. And, um, and uh, there was still room to write a message uh, when you sent the card. So, so really topical and thematic collectors have have the um you know have uh, the joy and enjoyment of really collecting the whole wide world of philately you don't have to stick to only stamps you can you can collect uh you know material from the sort of more traditional branches of philately to add to your collection and this is what makes a topical or thematic collection very unique uh, because if you only stuck to the stamps and, you know, given that there's only a finite number of stamps on, on any particular topic, that would be a collection that could perhaps be easily duplicated. But if you start to include some of this other material that's not really cataloged per se, um, then that makes your collection unique and every topical or thematic collection will be unique in that way. So I keep saying topical or thematic. So what is the difference between topical and thematic? So a topical collection <clears throat> is one where every item will have an image of the topic. So for example, uh, if your collection is about butterflies, um, every stamp, postmark, postal stationery will have an image of a butterfly. So I consider this to be like an illustrated catalog. So as you flip through your collection, it will basically be, be like an illustrated catalog where every item will have a picture of a butterfly. <clears throat> in contrast, a thematic collection, uh, is one in which every item either depicts the topic or a related aspect of the topic. So here you can expand the collection to uh, collect material that might be uh, related to the primary topic, but doesn't necessarily have a picture of the, of the focus of your collection. So this is more like an illustrated storybook or a children's storybook. Um, so for example, this National Geographic Kids book about butterflies uh, when you read the blurb on the inside cover, it mentions learn about the magical world of butterflies, their beauty, their importance to plant life, their incredible metamorphosis and migration. So here are different storylines telling about butterflies and you can collect uh, material that depicts the different plant life that they 
um, pollinate, the, the roots that they take when they migrate, um, the life cycle of a butterfly from, you know, uh, emerging from the, uh, to when they emerge from the cocoon. So there's many different aspects that you can explore and you might not have a picture of a butterfly on every single item in your collection. So it broadens the scope of your collection uh, over one that uh, is considered topical where every item has to have a picture of your, of your topic. So I'll give you uh, another example from another one of my collections. So, um, I, you know, I'm interested in medical philately and at the beginning of the pandemic, when I saw that countries were starting to issue stamps related to the COVID-19 pandemic, I started to collect material related to the pandemic. So in the strict sense, if you were to have a COVID-19 topical collection, um, you know, that could be a collection where every single stamp or item actually depicts a picture of the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. So here is the very first stamp that was issued during the pandemic, was issued by Iran on March 18th, just a week after the WHO declared COVID-19 to be a, a pandemic. And it's got a picture of the coronavirus. It doesn't mention COVID-19 because I don't think they had actually named the virus yet at that point. And if you look around, you'll find other stamps as well that have pictures of coronavirus on it. So this one here is from a, a private post company called Elster Post in Germany. It's got a depiction of a coronavirus uh, in close up. This one semi-postal stamp from Switzerland has a very stylized coronavirus. And you'll see other stamps that have coronaviruses here more in the background and there are other subjects on the stamp as well. So here uh, honoring the essential workers in the pandemic and here some of the public health measures uh, as well as essential workers. So, you know, you can build a topical collection related to uh, COVID-19, but much more interesting to me um, was to build a thematic collection where I could explore all the other storylines that were related to the pandemic. So for example, uh, there were lots of stamps issued depicting aspects of social distancing. This one from French Polynesia has these two ladies sitting on a bench separated by the distance of six coconuts laid side to side. So that was representative of the uh, minimum distance that you should social, uh, socially distance. Um, this one from Singapore uh, promotes hand washing uh, as part of public health measures to reduce transmission of the virus. Different uh, styles of face masks, you know, face masks sort of became a, a, a new clothing accessory during the pandemic. Uh, this ATM label from Israel depicts uh, drive through testing uh, that was set up by the Magen David Adon to test for COVID-19. Uh, this stamp from Belgium uh, highlights the social isolation that occurred during the pandemic from us, you know, isolating and uh, keeping within our immediately fam uh, immediate family bubbles and social distancing. Uh, a stamp from France highlighting essential workers, including grocery workers here. And more recently, uh, some stamps and other material related to vaccination and immunization against COVID-19. So a lot of different aspects of the story of the pandemic. And you'll notice that not a single one of these stamps actually has a picture of a coronavirus on it, but these are all very relevant to a COVID-19 thematic collection. And then beyond stamps, there's a lot of other material that can be collected. So for example, slogans and meters, here's just a couple of examples, uh, a, a machine cancel from Australia and a meter mark from Germany promoting vaccination. Uh, many different postal administrations produced postal stationary cards that they distributed for free to encourage people to uh, write letters and postcards to each other to, uh, to stay in touch despite uh, uh, physical distancing. This is an example from uh, a set of six cards that Canada Post produced. And then many, many different uh, postal administrations produced pictorial postmarks that commemorated or highlighted different aspects of the pandemic. These are a couple of examples from Taiwan. This one actually shows the Omicron variant of the virus, and this one shows a small uh, rapid test kit uh, for COVID-19. Uh, even more interesting was collecting postal history, and really it was an opportunity during the pandemic to collect postal history in real time. So rather than you know collecting 50 or 100 year old or even older postal history, I could actually collect uh, material that was uh, relevant um, in, in 
real time. So here's an example of uh, a letter that was mailed from Taiwan to Canada, but was returned to the sender. Uh, so, you know, there were lots of examples of this from different countries because of the disruptions in air travel due to the COVID-19 pandemic and suspension of mail service between countries. Uh, some countries, uh, particularly China, uh, actually disinfected incoming mail. So here's a letter uh, uh, that was incoming to China from Hong Kong that has a label on it uh, uh, telling the recipient about how the letter was disinfected. And then this is a cover from Thailand that has a hand stamp indicating that delivery was delayed uh, because there was a local outbreak and the post office workers had to uh, hold the mail because of uh, um, uh, the need to quarantine for a short time. Uh, and there's other fun aspects that you can look for as well. So there have been uh, some design errors. Here's one example. Uh, this was a stamp issued by Poland in 2021 uh, promoting vaccination. And uh, you can see this woman here is flexing her uh, biceps as a symbol of strength and support. Uh, but they've drawn the uh, Band-Aid from the vaccination on her biceps muscle, which of course is not where you typically get the vaccination. We get it in the deltoid. Uh, or the shoulder muscle, which is uh, properly depicted in this postmark from Korea and this stamp from India. So it's fun to collect or to look for and collect these sort of uh, design errors. Um, so I, that's just a sort of quick overview of some of the items from my collection to kind of illustrate the ideas that I've talked about. Whether you're starting out with a topical or thematic collection or whether you have one and you're looking to expand it, there's uh, a lot of online resources that you can uh, turn to to help you in your search for material. Uh, Colnect is a online stamp catalog that I find very useful. They've got listings for over uh, for almost uh, um, one and a half million stamps. And you can type in the search bar up here any search term and it will show you a list of uh, stamps. Uh, that have that uh, search term in the description. And they also have this uh, category of themes where if you click on the themes button here, it actually brings up a whole list of, uh, of different themes. There's over a thousand of them. And many of the stamps in the catalog have been with the different themes. It's not complete by any means, but it's certainly a good starting point for you to start assembling uh, a collection of stamps related to those themes. Uh, over a thousand themes. Um, for some of the more popular topics, you may even be able to find specific uh, online um, websites specifically related to the theme that you're interested in. So for bird uh, collectors, there's a very, uh, fa there's a fantastic um, website that basically lists all the stamps that have ever been issued uh, on birds. Uh, I found this one on medical philately, so medicine and pharmacy in philately. It's it's based in Germany, but they do have a, an English uh, part of the website as well. Uh, the American Topical Association is a great uh, collector association. It's the largest uh, association of topical and thematic collectors. They produce a journal uh, every uh, or six times a year, every two months. It has a lot of interesting articles and information about topical collecting. And they also have this uh, resource book that you can buy on their website that has information, uh, examples, um, guidelines, and uh, talks not only about collecting, but if you want to try your hand at it, uh, also gives some hints about uh, exhibiting, uh, topical and thematic exhibiting. And if you're a member of the ATA, you can also purchase checklists. So they have compiled almost 1,500 uh, checklists on a variety of topics, and the Cost of the checklist is uh, dependent on how big it is. So the smaller ones don't cost very much. The larger ones, they charge a bit more. Um, but these are fairly complete. They're, uh, um, they include the Scott listing. And they do include those agency stamps that I mentioned. So um, you, know, you have it as your resource, and you can decide for yourself which of these stamps that you want to add to your collection. So I think that's it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this overview. And I'll turn things back to you, Greg. Thanks so much, Jean. That was a terrific introduction to the topic. We're grateful. Um, if you are enjoying these RPSC uh, videos, uh, whether they're introduction, intermediate, intermediate, or advanced collector videos, we ask you to go to our YouTube channel and like it. Um, if you have any suggestions on future topics for these videos, please get in touch at talks at rpsc.org. 
And um, if you would like to uh, find out more about being a, becoming a member of the RPSC, um, please go to rpsc.org and we'll be very happy to, uh, to hear from you and help you with that process. Thanks very much.